Over the moon this week as I get two honourable mentions in International Photographer of the Year 2017. One for the Nature Landscape, which was a series of images I shot in Iceland, and the other one for Image Manipulation, which was entitled Road Warrior. What you're getting this week is my editing process of the Old Man of Storm image that I took a couple of weeks ago. Enjoy. <laughs> Okay, I said I'd have a video up every week, but it's been very busy this week for me work-wise, so I never managed to get anything edited, and I didn't want to just throw up something, just for the sake of saying that I'm putting a video up every week. So what you've got this week is my editing process for the Old Man of Store image that I took a couple of weeks ago when we were up in Sky. Actually, this, is maybe not to everyone's taste, but it's one of my favourite images. And we were just very fortunate with the light, very fortunate with the weather, just everything about the day. And it was such a brilliant weekend. Uh, I thought I'd give you a wee insight into how I actually go about editing some of my landscape images. We're all inspired by different photographers. And it just depends what area of photography that you are into and what you like shooting for the landscape but for me there's so many to mention off the top of my head just now uh, Max Reeve, Michael Shane Blum, Thomas Heaton each one of them edits differently, processes their image differently, shoots differently but each one of them I'm inspired by and I love watching them on the YouTube channels so hopefully you'll take something away from this uh, if you don't Fair enough, <laughs> you don't have to, uh, but it gives you an insight into how everybody edits differently. Uh, myself, I'll attempt different images and each image is edited differently. This one, as I've said, I knew what I was going to do in post when I shot the image and that really made the workflow fluid and quick. That, I think, is really important if everything's perfect and that for me that day was just absolutely perfect. I've got the movie playing in front of me here because I actually originally recorded this edit so that I could use it in the future. Uh, so now I'm going to actually <laughs> talk over this. So hopefully it was a nine minute edit, I'm not going to talk for nine minutes, I'm going to speed some of the process. As I say I brought this image into Photoshop to edit straight away. And I created a high pass layer just to bring out the emphasis on the rocks. A soft light dodge and an overlay dodge. That just shows that I get my light right because the light was lovely coming through the old man of storm falling in the snow. So that's why I brought these in like this and used two separate layers to do it. Next I've gone to the camera roll filter again and that's me just tweaking the image to get to where I want. You'll notice in the video I jump quite a bit between the camera roll filter. I just love that aspect of Photoshop. The image is sharpened now and it's just me picking up the points that I want sharpened. You hold down the Alt button, uh, Alt key in the keyboard and it lets you see what points are actually being sharpened. Next I'll go into the curves, just to adjust the image ever so slightly, as if I'm just trying to gain my starting point here. What I'm looking to do now is I'm looking to emphasise the warmth and the glow of the sun just down in this area here. So I'm going to push the oranges ever so slightly, just to get a nice natural feel to the image. I don't want to over process this, I really liked this shot when I was taking it and I knew, as I said, I knew exactly, well near enough exactly what I was wanting to do so as I say I'm just emphasising the colours here, the oranges and the blues within the image and you'll notice here the temperature, I'm adjusting that, that was a slightly, bringing in a little bit of magenta I love the images, that's a personal preference there. I absolutely love the images with uh, a slight hint of magenta in them. Again, going back in now to emphasize the light. As you can see, I've used the brush tool here. 
and I'm actually, if you look at it, the exposure's down a wee bit. I've actually got the whites turned up quite high and the clarity turned up quite high. I'm now going to adjust my exposure now just to get it to the point where I really like the light coming in. Again, I'm still painting that light. I'm not overdoing it though. I'm just trying to give us an emphasis and a lead into the image. And you'll see here, you can see the bits that it actually kind of peaks and looks unnatural. Now, over on the rocks on the left hand side, the snow coming down there, you'll see these points just jumping ever so slightly. Being quite liberal with it, because I don't want it to look unnatural, but I also don't want the shadows on the left of the image to detract from the light. I'm looking for a nice balance within this. The reason now some of the areas where I feel as if it's picked up too much. As I say, it is just an entire process that you've, you've got to work yourself. You've got to kind of know when's the image going to be balanced, when's the light going to look natural without looking unnatural as to speak uh, so to speak so we've got to kind of look at this in the best artistic eye you're maybe a photographer but you're also an artist as well again you can see the magenta coming back in here and from that you can see the difference in the image already just a few manipulations there right the next bit was something I played around with here this rock down in the left, the right hand side corner, sorry. I, I was unsure whether I wanted a balance of negative space coming into the image or whether I wanted the rock in it. I, so what I was doing here was coning out the rock just to see if it balanced the image. And I also took out some of these two side rocks here just to the left of the mouse. But you'll notice here within this, I keep playing around with it, bringing it back in, taking it back out, bringing it back in, taking it back out. My decision, my final decision was to leave it in because it acted as a marker from the right hand side. Although the two paths are leading off, at one, two, three, the three paths are leading off through the main path. What actually that rock did, and you'll notice I'll go back in and take it out again, but what actually that rock did was that caused the image to point us back through the middle of the, those rocks. As I say, it was a decision I made. I was looking to balance the image with some negative space, some extra white in the image, just to kind of help balance it. But when you look at the overall composition of the image, it is balanced, and that rock itself actually helped create a viewpoint, for me anyway. It helped direct the viewer back in through the image. Everything's pointing towards the path, so these really, really helped. This here is the Pro Contrast. I think it's DxO that own the software now, not Google. It used to be Google Nick Collection, and they've got a new one coming out sometime this year, so that I'll be purchasing that as well, because I find that's very, very handy when it comes to editing. Normally, 90% of the time, it's only Pro Contrast they use, but sometimes if the image is noisy, I'll go in and use maybe the sky filter or denoise within it. Looking here again to balance the image, it's all the image, the entire image is like balance. Now we're into colour balance, tonal balance. Uh, and you'll notice it changes quite a bit during this edit. It's one of the main things that we're doing. As I said earlier, I said we're all artists, we're all photographers, but we're also all artists. So it's looking to get that happy medium that you like from your original image to what you want the final image to be. So what you've got to look for in your final image is what do you want out of it? If you keep producing the same images like everybody else, it's never going to stand out if that's what you're hoping to do, if you're hoping to get an image to stand out. Edit these images for you. Don't think about any deals. Learn from everybody else, but don't think about any deals when you're doing it. As you'll also notice, I decided to take out the two rocks at the side. Again, this is a judgment call. 
Did I like it eventually? No, I left them back in because I didn't want to edit the, the image too much at all. So they actually went back in and had deleted that final layer. The full image now, the colour balance, everything for me, I'm very, very happy with. And what you see now is the final edit. Hopefully that gave you a wee insight into how my editing style is. As I say, every image is different when it comes to editing and normally you will know when you're shooting, what you're going to do just to tweak the image. A lot of the time when it comes into the studio side for me, I know exactly what I'm going to do when it comes to the editing. Uh, when I'm doing the uh, image manipulation, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Sometimes they evolve though into something completely and utterly different and that's the journey that I really, really enjoy. When it comes to the landscapes, however, 99% of the time I know how I'm going to edit the image. It's either going to be a black and white edit or I'm going to play around with the tonal values ever so slightly just to get the final image that I'm after. I see that there was a, a 90 minute, 90 minute, that there was a 9 minute edit in total to get my final image and that was really good because I knew exactly what I was wanting with that. The light was perfect, the day was perfect, in fact that full weekend was absolutely perfect so it was really really good, felt very fortunate to be up there and getting that shot. So if you've enjoyed this video, thumbs up please because that really helps. Uh, hit subscribe below if you haven't already and I'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching.